Okay, if, if we can get started. Is it all right? Uh, be, before I go on, are there any quick? Are there any questions on any of the, on complement, or any of the other material that we've covered so far? I, I just want. Oh, I, one thing. Yes. There in in your handouts. There, it, towards the end, there, there, where I was talking about the MAC complex, in the handout it says that the MAC complex is C5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. Uh, strictly speaking, the, the MAC complex is, is the complex of 5, 6, and 7. That's the membrane attack complex. Sometimes you see the term used to refer to both the, the entire, the whole complex, or just that. But strictly speaking, the MAC complex is actually just C5, 6, and 7, that complex that attacks and then inserts into the membrane. Okay, so you can correct that in your notes. Um, I, I just want to finish off just a little bit more on complement and on, on some complement uh, deficiencies and the effects of uh, diseases associated with some complement deficiencies. Some of them we've, we've seen already. This one, a deficiency in C1 INH, that's the major controller of that classical pathway, results in the disease hereditary angioedema because of overproduction of of, of the C2B, the prokinin. <coughs> Uh, there are there are patients with deficiencies of, of the complement component C1, 2, and 4. These these patients have a predisposition to develop uh, SLE, systemic lupus erythematosus type symptoms. And the reason is is that you don't get. Remember, I said that though that that C4 when it binds to the activation complex after C1 after C1 is is activated. It acts on C4. That binds to the membranes. But sometimes it also binds to the immunoglobulin itself. So that, that C4 binding to the immunoglobulin actually is an opsonin uh, for the immunoglobulin. So that when you have immune complexes, they get opsonized and they're more readily cleared. In the absence of these components, you don't get that opsonization of those immune complexes. So the immune complexes persist for longer. They tend to, to aggregate and become larger, precipitate out in serum. You get kidney damage, you get rashes, and so on. So deficiencies of these will lead to, to a, a, a SLE-like disease. As far as the lectin pathway, there are patients that have uh, de defects in that membrane, uh, the mannose binding lectin, and they're more susceptible to bacterial infections. And this is particularly true. You, you see this in infants and in the immunosuppressed. Why do you think that is? Why don't you see it in, in, in uh, adults? Why do you see, why is this only a problem in the infants and the immunosuppressed? What do you think? We probably have, we have antibodies to a lot of these things. We, didn't, we can use the classical pathway. Infants don't have that, they have, they're not making their own antibodies yet. And similarly, the immunosuppressed are going to have problems making antibodies and responding. So you, these, these, other, these pathways, the lectin pathway and then the alternative pathway are more important than those individuals. So, that we, so we used, typically see it in these individuals. As far as the alternative pathway, there are factor, uh, def defects in factors B or D, uh, and there then they become more susceptibility to uh, particularly pus-forming bacterial infections. And again, it's because they don't get opsonized. The, the, the particles are just not being opsonized sufficiently, and they're not cleared as rapidly for by the phagocytic cells. C3 deficiency is a very serious deficiency, and they're susceptible to most bacterial infections. And again, it's due simply because they just don't get, the, the particles are not getting opsonized properly. And in addition, without C3, you don't have anything going on. You, you, can't, you can't enter into the, uh, the lytic pathway is non-functional. You can't opsonize these particles. Deficiencies in the later components of, of um, um, the, the, the lytic pathway, these, pa these patients are susceptible to gram-negative bacteria. Now, you haven't had the, ba the bacteriology section, but I'm sure some of you have had some, some bacteriology. What's the difference between gram-negative and gram-positive? Why do you think that these patients are only susceptible primarily to the gram-negative bacterial infections? What's the difference between gram Does anybody know the difference between gram-negative and gram-positives? Outer membrane, right? The gram-negatives have an outer membrane, gram-positives don't. 
These are, this is what lyses the outer membrane of gram-negative bacteria and then kills the, inactivates or kills the bacteria. Gram-positive bacteria don't have an outer membrane and, and they're, they're not susceptible to lysis by complement. So these are gram-negative infections you see in these type, these individuals. There, is an, there are examples of patients that have def defects in prepared. That is an X-linked, uh, the gene uh, is an X-linked gene. So where will you, where, where will you expect to see this, these types of immunodeficiency patients? In men, all right, you'll see it in men. Uh, and they're, they're, this is noted with particularly a susceptibility to development of pneumococcal meningitis. Now, this is actually a very serious deficiency in the sense that you, 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 what you usually see, this is in, in young children, in young boys, is where you get these things. They get their first bout of meningitis. Most of them actually die from the meningitis. If they survive, then, then they don't have any problem after that. If they, if they survive the initial infection, why? Why should they, if they survive the initial infection, why should they be resistant? You have antibodies now, the, the classical pathway takes over and you don't need the elective pathway as much, okay? There are defects in factors H and I. These lead essentially to a C3 deficiency. Because remember, this is the, the ones that are the factors that are involved in degrading the, the uh, C, C3B. If you can't do that, you just, you, know, you have this spontaneous hydrolysis of C3 going on and you get that amplification loop just keeps going and going and going. You can never inactivate it. You end up depleting yourself of C3. So this mimics a C3 deficiency. Okay. Any questions on that? And then I'll go on to the topic for today.